We are here at the Timothy Dwight College at Yale University, and uh, tonight is the premiere of Paul Reale's Concerto for Cello and Strings and Percussion. We'll play in the beautiful Wolsey Hall, and today I'm going to give you just a little bit of an overview of the piece and what to, to look for when you're listening. Um, in 2016, Paul Reale gave me a call and asked me if I would be interested in recording some of his cello music. He had two cello sonatas, um, a solo sonata, a cello and piano sonatas, and then a solo sonata, and then uh, a set of short pieces. And so we worked on that and uh, recorded it. It came out in 2018. And after we finished that, Paul said, I'm going to write a cello concerto. And so within the next couple of years, he did that. And so here we are today performing that, that work. He has written this piece in three movements. The first movement is called interregnum, which uh, means interruption. So what are we interrupting? First of all, he starts with this uh, beautiful opening that is a little bit reminiscent of uh, Hinostera, the Pampayana. That is, you know, uh, the beautiful grassy plains in Argentina. So I'll play just the, the very opening. reminiscent of uh, the Hinostera, but he uses a little clip of Bach in there. And he uses this later on too. And I, I learned with the other pieces that we had worked on that uh, Paul loves to use some of these motives of, of composers that he, he particularly cares for and also of works for cello. So this is reminiscent of the first suite. And he does this later in a cadenza as well, where he picks up. So we, we're hearing many of these. Uh, so what is the interruption then? He's, he's built this uh, beautiful uh, melodic line and sweeping, uh, sweeping sort of uh, vision. Um, and then he comes in with this interruption. And this happens quite frequently all throughout the piece. Continuing on in the first movement, we come across a raucous cadenza with the cello. This last theme is again Copland's Appalachian Spring, as if to say, okay, everything is all right. Uh, so then at the end, he brings back this uh, melodic landscape, as, as you will, the, um, the dramatic sort of uh, arpeggiated figure. <laughs> Kodai's uh, Opus 8, the solo sonata, this, this type of Hungarian speech pattern. 
And he continues with that in the second movement. The second movement of the cello concerto is called Angels. And I look at this movement as being, uh, on the one hand, ethereal, and on the other hand, a bit exotic. He brings in, uh, as we were talking about the Kodai Opus 8 solo sonata, some of those themes as well, um, or, or, or just types of playing. For example, he'll use the, um, the sustained note with a plucking background. <laughs> Eastern quality, Middle Eastern quality, even Arabic. Um, and the other thing that you'll hear in this is just a very strong interest in color. And even reminiscent of Debussy or Ravel, um, he uses glissandi and harmonics. Uh, here is a section. <laughs> sections, they also continue these harmonics and these different colors and also um, many glissandi, even glissandi from one half step to the next step, um, just giving a very uh, sort of unsettled quality. Here's an example of the glissandi in the orchestra with just a half step. <laughs> And he also uses uh, percussion instruments to get all sorts of different colors, the vibraphone, the marimba, piano, and the timpani. In the second movement, uh, again, with this idea of something sort of exotic and maybe um, Middle Eastern, um, he establishes this uh, atmosphere with the timpani and the strings uh, playing um. Very regular beats. And then the cello coming in with a sort of a dramatic theme. Almost like a vocal line um, that's, that's uh, crying above this sort of uh, regular beat. Um, and then at the very end, you will hear uh, a long section with, with uh, violins. He's, he split the violins into four parts. And so there are many little um, motives happening at the same time, and, and then just one beat off. And so it's almost like it's going up to heaven at the very end, the, the an angels or the angelic quality of this movement. In the third movement of the cello concerto is, uh, is called funk, and we hear even more recognizable snippets of cello concertos, in fact, uh, Saint-Saëns and Shostakovich, and he begins with this pattern that we all practice as young cellists, this uh, 16th note double stop passages but he uses just one measure of it. And this comes back many times, and then it's answered back and forth with the timpani or the xylophone or the vibraphone, just um, you know, making that same sort of rhythm. Um, and again, we are using snippets of this and that. He still uses this theme of, uh, of the, the large landscape. <laughs> way. Um, and then later on he has a section that is vulgar and funky and it's sort of a jazzy uh, jazzy part with and uh, all the uh, all the percussion instruments are, are getting in there with rhythmic rhythmic patterns and um, so it's, it's a very interesting movement, 
At the end, he brings in this theme, this motive from Shostakovich, I'll only not it's double stops. And then he finishes the piece. So, you know, using all of these uh, snippets and um, sort of references to the cello concertos and different composers, um, Paul has somehow brilliantly brought this all together into one piece um, and as a, as a whole to create these illusions and interruptions and a, a, a piece on a grand scale. So I have shown how Paul has brought in all of these different themes and references from great composers and great repertoire for the cello and he brilliantly puts it together into his own structure and his own form to create a very successful and very beautiful piece for the cello and strings and percussion.